It would be hard to imagine a bigger fan and promoter of the bluegrass sound here in the Inland Northwest than this man. Well, hi friends, my name is Kevin Brown and welcome to Front Porch Bluegrass. Besides hosting a weekly show on Spokane Public Radio, dedicated to all things bluegrass, Kevin Brown is also co-founder and the current director of a bluegrass festival that over the last decade has earned a reputation among pickers nationwide for being one of the best small bluegrass festivals in the country. Welcome to Medical Lake Washington, where one weekend a year, the locals are proud to say, the water is blue and the grass is too. And that's because each August, the shores of Medical Lake serve as a scenic backdrop for a little picking, plucking, strumming, fiddling, and harmonizing, all part of the Blue Waters Bluegrass Festival. Back in 2002, there was a group of folks from the Medical Lake community that came up with the idea of wanting to do a bluegrass festival. So they uh, enlisted some of the folks from the local in the Northwest bluegrass community. Um, so myself and some others came out who kind of knew the genre and knew the uh, culture of bluegrass festivals and uh, we got the festival off the ground. Serving as music director to begin with, Kevin admits interest in the Blue Waters Festival was slow to gain traction early on. However, that would change in 2007 with the arrival of Bluegrass Royalty. There was a point where we went for a, kind of a legendary bluegrass band called The Seldom Scene. And there was a lot of hand wringing about whether we could spend this much money to bring them in. But the park filled up with people that year. Um, it was a great year. We finished in the black, and uh, I think that was a defining year for the festival. I'm gonna love you Originally, the vision of the folks in the Medical Lake community is they wanted something that could be a fundraiser for a few charitable organizations in Medical Lake. but. You know, it was also from the get-go about uh, promoting bluegrass music, you know, just as a cultural art form and uh, educating people um, about the history of bluegrass. We hope you enjoy this set as a tribute to the late, great Hazel Dickens. That's something we take uh, seriously. We're in our second year of actually doing a dedicated set um, specifically to educate about the, the history of, of the music. And then purely separate uh, from that is the, the youth camp that we started doing last year. As with any activity that's socially oriented, we want to get them started young. And that's really our objective is to get them to know each other, have them learn some tunes, have them experience what playing this kind of acoustic music is like, and build a community. If you teach kids to do that, that skill of playing music and using it as a social vehicle, it's a gift that lasts a lifetime. Beyond providing what they call Blue Camp for kids, the festival also features a variety of workshops for adults. The way we learned how to do this is by listening to our heroes. That's a key part of the festivals, and other festivals do that too, but it's always, again, wonderful to have some of your heroes sit down in a, a tent, and especially when you've got two or three of them from different bands, they you know, really kind of come at it from different angles and then play a song together and you know demonstrate some things. You know, the walls sort of go away in terms of the audience and the performers. That's one of the great things about the culture. Since the first note was played over 13 years ago, the success and growth of the Blue Waters Festival each year centers around a strong partnership between two separate organizations. The Blue Waters Bluegrass Association on one side providing management and coordination and on the other the Inland Northwest Bluegrass Association, providing much needed volunteers and more. Uh, we promote bluegrass music throughout the Inland Northwest. We support festivals. You know, most of the people who participate in the organization are musicians. So it's a kind of a community, if you will, of people who love them and support the music. Whether it be large or small, what makes a bluegrass festival like Blue Waters a musical experience to remember often goes well beyond the quality picking and singing on stage. For bluegrass is all about community, a passion for music, and an irresistible desire to share. I think one of the biggest things is how participatory it is. Even for people who just you know know one or two chords on a guitar, but um, to have the people that you just watched do a show on the main stage come down and do that parking lot picking and, and show you, well, here's a different way to play that chord or something. I think that's such a huge part of, uh, of bluegrass. For me, it's a very personal thing. I've spent many an afternoon here 
uh, listening to stuff that touches the heart. Um, the music is so important. I mean, you check in, you play, you sing with people, and uh, something happens. It's magic to me. One of my favorite things every year is to hear uh, somebody say, this is my first time, you know, especially if it's, I've never been to a bluegrass festival before. But even people who are, you know, a little bit in the know with bluegrass to find us and discover, you know, the festival, that's always one of the most gratifying things. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.